Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new video. Welcome to a new location. I'm just vibing and I'm gonna talk about my favorites for the month of February. I haven't done one of these videos in a very hot minute. I just feel like it's necessary. And where are my hair clips? I forgot them upstairs. This is the problem. My ideal location to film would be my vanity, but the vanity setup is just not it's not ideal. I've just been plopping myself in different rooms of the home, seeing what happens. But let's stop talking because we all know I can, for some reason, with a camera, I can talk on and on and on for hours, but you would be so surprised to know that in real life, I'm not, I'm not the chatty one. I'm more of the listener. Here we are. It's my show. We're gonna do makeup first. I'm gonna apply my favorite makeup. This has just been the routine this past month, but then we're gonna talk about other things like the book that I read. We're gonna talk about hair products. We're covering it all, jewelry, my favorite handbag. So if that's interesting to you, we're gonna get to it and hopefully the light will cooperate considering this is mostly natural lighting, the lighting might change, but I'm gonna apply my Uli Henriksen Banana Bright Under Eye Cream. I can't get enough of this, still using this nonstop. On days where I'm wearing makeup, it lays really beautifully under makeup, but also on days where I'm not wearing any makeup, it kind of just like brightens the under eye and makes it less necessary to wear makeup. Also, do you see these beautiful flowers? I tried to intricately place them, strategically place them. Mike bought them for me. They're so pretty and I love them. I feel like you can't really see them though, but it's the effort that counts. I'm not a big foundation wearer, which is something that I've realized recently. A lot of the times I'll just throw on concealer and use that as concealer slash foundation, but I have been really into this, which is kind of shocking because when I first tried this, I don't really feel like I fell in love with it, but I'm telling you, man, that California trip, just opened my eyes to different makeup products, but this is the Say Beauty Slip Tint. It has broad spec broad spectrum, I can't speak, SPF 35 sunscreen, and I'm in the shade three, and I've literally just been, well, let's tie my hair back first because I did wash it yesterday. This is definitely a favorite. These stupid slip hair ties, they're so expensive and so unnecessary, but I'm gonna be honest, like these are the hair ties that I reach for when I'm just doing the thing and I just want my hair out of my face. I'm gonna take about a pump of that, and I literally use this with my fingers, and I think that this is why this has become my favorite foundation because it's not really like foundation. I kind of just think of it in my brain as like face cream. Not a lot of coverage, gives a lot of jutes. See? I've been really enjoying it. And I'm in this spot where I really wanna go through the makeup products that I have. I'm actually thinking about doing a Project Pan video and legitimately sticking with it. I feel like I did a Project Pan video once and then I ended up discarding a lot of that makeup because it shouldn't have been in my Project Pan from the beginning because a lot of it was expired makeup. I told myself that it was okay, but I don't think that it was okay. So this is the skin really juicy, really light. You know, if you're someone that is a full coverage babe, you are not gonna like this. For concealer, I've had a love-hate relationship with this. I just, I find that the color was a little too warm for me, but I don't know what it is recently. It doesn't bother me, but this is the Dior Backstage Concealer. I'm in the shade 2CR, and this has just like been the vibe. But can you see, it is really peachy or like warm for me. I find in the winter, in the paler months, it doesn't lean as warm on me. I have no idea if that makes any sense, but I feel like when I have a tan, it's too peachy, but when I'm pale, it's not too peachy. Still really loving this e.l.f. concealer brush. Airy, it blends the product out really naturally, and y'all know, I am just a natural makeup queen. It's just been my vibe, and I know 2016 makeup is coming back, and the other day I actually like did a little a wing with some eyeshadow and I was having just like a moment. Tati Westbrook said it beautifully in a recent video. You know when your makeup, when you just start to look mean, like that's when the makeup is just so good. When I put a little bit of effort into my eyes, like I have poop brown eyes, okay? They're poop brown. And for me, it's especially annoying because my husband has what his family calls Christmas eyes because they're green, there's like flecks of like light brown that almost reflect red in them. It's so annoying. Like why are men so effortlessly gorgeous and get all of the traits that us women want because society just like dictates that women should be so beautiful and we have to try so hard. And then you have men who are just born with Christmas eyes, which like 
who even knew that was a thing. When I put a little smokage around the eyes, it really makes my eyes pop, but I'm not gonna lie. All in all, I really am just an effortless, I like an effortless natural beauty. It's just easier, it's more me, I feel comfortable, and I don't really like sitting here for too long anymore. Oh, I got a broken hair. I'm back on this. This is annoying. I really want to like finish this, but it's, oh wait, no, wow. I think we can finish this. This is the OG sculpted face stick in copper. I use this as like a contour slash a bronzer. It's just really emollient. It looks dark on my complexion because I am so pale, but it blends so nice. And this is like not a new product. If you've been here, you've seen me use this a bajillion times. Easy, it's effortless. I like that it comes in a stick. I'm really missing my Merit bronzing stick. I have to text my sister-in-law and see if she even tried it because I gave it to her to try and then I think she forgot about it and I forgot about it. And then the other day I was trying to get ready in the morning and I was like mixing it up because I have been reaching for this nonstop to the point where I'm kind of getting a little sick of it. So I wanted to try something else. Who is that? Never pick up the phone when someone calls the landline. I've watched way too many Scream movies. It's not happening for me. I'm using my Yensa brush. This brush is starting to like creak when I blend my makeup out. So I'm hoping it doesn't break, but it's just like the best for products like this. But anyway, what was I saying? I went to go reach for my Merit bronzing stick and I realized that I didn't have it. And then I tried to find it. And then it dawned on me this morning that I gave it to Amanda. So I need to ask her, I actually need to text her. Anyway, I do work with Merit. So if you're purchasing anything from Merit, I will leave my little link down below. They have such good products, easy breezy products. I'm gonna dedicate my time to this to finish it because I'm so close to finishing it. And I kind of want to minimize or minimalize my makeup routine this year, which is so funny because if you follow along, I can't, I just, I have an addiction to Walgreens. I can't stop going to Walgreens and I can't stop buying nude drugstore lipsticks. It's really, it's really an addiction. I thought that these were discontinued. And then I went to Ulta the other day she wants to minimize her collection, but she can't stop shopping. I went to Ulta and I saw this. I thought that this was limited edition and I bought this quite a few years ago, but this is the Mac Glow Play. I remember I went out with my aunt. We went to some kind of Mac. I think they had like an event. It was like right before COVID hit. I had just gotten my wisdom teeth out. It was a terrible experience. It was all downhill from there. Like wisdom teeth, extraction, and then they must have been like my lucky charm because life just, it hasn't, has not been the same. I feel like things have just gone downhill. Aside from like marrying my husband, the biggest achievement of my life, I would say. Um, so I guess, you know, but the rest of the life, dad dying, um, <laughs> it's not funny. I'm having a really hard time about it this week and I've been really emotional. So if I laugh, it's not funny. Know that inside I'm really crying, but sometimes you gotta laugh about things, you know? Anywho, the blush, beautiful, I love it. I think it's great for all year round. A good in-between, y'all know I love my Merit Flush Bombs. Those are my favorite blushes. Tower 28 is my second favorite. Those are both really creamy and gel-like. They're very like hydrating formulas. This is a nice in-between. Personally, the Charlotte Tilbury Blush Wands, those are too matte for me. These are a nice in-between, a matte formula and like a wet formula. This is like, perfect and I really really love the color. So boring. I'm really ready to finish this but I feel like this powder is gonna last me a lifetime. I use this powder every time I do my makeup which I would say during the week. I probably don't do my makeup like two or three days out of the week. I hate the packaging. I never put the lid on it because the lid is like hard to take on and off. So I kind of just put the lid upside down on top and leave my powder puff in the lid like this. And this is how I leave it on my vanity. So that is annoying. I have to turn it upside down to get all four of the colors in the pan. I normally just like tap it on the side. I am lazy. And then I always get so much of the white and I don't get any of the other colors, but I just did a really nice job of collecting each and every shade. I'm loving these powder puffs from Amazon. This one is getting a little dingy. It feels like wet over here. So I'm moving on to a different side, picking up that powder and setting my under eye. This powder just makes my under eyes look as flawless as they possibly can be. 
doesn't dry out my skin. It doesn't accentuate any of the fine lines or the texture that I have around my eyes. I have a lot of texture, especially in here. It does a nice job of blurring my pores. I will always layer creams and powders. It's just my vibe. I like how the finish looks. It kind of gives more of like a blown out airbrush natural effect in my opinion. So we laid down that beautiful blush from MAC and now I'm gonna put some powder. This is the Stay Naked Threesome by Urban Decay in Rise. I did a dedicated video on this. I love this palette. I use it all the time. You literally cannot even tell. It looks like I've never even touched it, but you get a bronzer, a highlighter, and a blush. And I'm gonna tap this over top some in the crease. This is just like what I always do. I don't know if you notice. Layering helps the makeup last the longest. While I'm not going for like a full face beat, it is nice to throw my makeup on in the morning and it look decent at the end of the day. I just, I feel like if you're gonna take the time to do it, you might as well take the time to do it and make it last. I love hourglass brushes. I'm still really, really into this one. I interchange between this brush and the e.l.f. brush with my concealer and I use this with foundation as well. I don't use the e.l.f. brush with foundation, but just so you know, I do want you to know that I am still using that very expensive brush in case you bought it. I'm still loving it. But now I'm gonna hop into this with the larger side and I will use this with blush too. It just, it depends on my mood. I kind of just saw this one and grabbed it, but most mornings when I'm getting ready, I grab this brush. I use blush on this side, bronzer on this side. So let's grab the bronzer shade. Personally, I like to put my powder blush down first and then do the bronzer. It gives a more natural kind of like tames the blush a little bit. So if I put too much on, which I think I did, especially on this side, it kind of just helps marinate it all. Just gives it a more blown out effortless look. And then I take what's ever left over, put it on my nose to the crease as well. But yeah, it's just like the complexion. It's all about the complexion for me. I do very minimal eyes, which you guys are gonna see, but I've been really honing in on my complexion products and my brows. I love this Merit brow gel. I use a lot of different brow gels, but this I would say is just the one that I gravitate towards the most. It's very natural. However, I did just try the new e.l.f. Wow brow gel and that was so natural too. It was so good. Like, honestly, I think I might like it more than my Essence Make Me brow. This one just like hasn't been right. I think I mentioned this to you guys, but ever since we went to California and I brought this with me, I don't know if it was like the pressure on the plane, but it's just like a little bit chunkier. Like the formula, something happened to it. ABH, this is 7B. And I don't know, I've been toying with the Brow Wiz. I've been using the pomade. Why don't I use the pomade today? Just because I feel like I never show this to you guys. But I just want like my brows to do a lot of the talking, which honestly my brows do a lot of talking and it annoys a lot of people for some reason. And a little bit of this goes a very long way. I don't like dip in too much. It's so nice. I feel very insecure about my brows sometimes because they sit differently on my face. This one's higher than this one. They're not like shaped perfectly, but honestly, I look at other people and their brows are not the same and I don't mind it. Like it, I find, I kind of find it intriguing. Why is that? Why are we so critical of ourselves? And then when it comes to other people, it's like endearing. I don't know, is it me? I might just be a weirdo. I really need to go through my eyeshadow drawer. I've literally been using this nonstop. This is the Il Maquillage Color Boss Squad in the real deal. Some mattes, some shimmers. I've literally just been going into like this peachy shade that kind of matches my top on a Scott Barnes brush. And I've just been like throwing this into the crease. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm still not really into doing my eye makeup. It's just on a day-to-day -day basis, I do this, which is a little bit of shadow around the eye. So I'll literally just take a fluffy brush, go into the crease and go underneath the eye. And like, that is all that I will do. I just like to use a wash of some kind of like neutral shade. I actually went to Ulta the other day, the same time that I just mentioned before. So I'm not going to Ulta excessively, but enough for someone who's trying to work through her collection. They had like the single shadows, like the max single shadows. I literally have a single shadow right here because I do really like this. But the other day when I was using this, this is NARS Nepal. I was like, who the F buys single shadows anymore? It just seems so silly to me. This idiot right here, I was in the MAC section where I had seen that this 
still is sold. And they had single shadows. And I really want soft brown. But I feel like that's a good investment for me because I just do this trick with my, my brushy brush with the eyes. I'm gonna go into bronzer. Some days I just do this. Some days I'll just go in with a bronzer. Some days I'll just go in with a neutral kind of eyeshadow. And some days I'll go in with both. So today I'm gonna go in with both just to give, I just like a little bit of dimension in the eyes. I don't know. I just find like it helps the makeup look, look a little bit more put together. But I'm literally doing the same exact thing and I'm not being particular about it and I'm kind of just putting it all over the lid. But can you see how that just adds a little bit of depth? I'm gonna use this because I showed it to you and I've been using it a lot, but it's just like this really pretty shimmery shade. Pop this on the center of my lid and I like this because it's like shimmery but not too shimmery. It's kind of like a muted tone, which I like. I'm kind of going for like the cool girl aesthetic. Like she doesn't give a shit. She's just here, not for a long time, but for a good time. And don't even say the not for a long time because I feel my, <sighs> the anxiety is so real. It's like terribly insane. I'm gonna hop into this highlighter. This highlighter is so pretty. I like a highlighter that's just super natural. Like it just looks like wet skin. There's no like glitter, there's no dew. So that's a little bit of it on. How nice is that? And then this side looks nice too. It kind of just takes what I already got and adds a little bit, it like highlights it, you know? No pun intended. Put it underneath the brow. I put a little bit on my Cupid's bow. I put a little bit on the chin. A pencil brush and just highlight the inner corners of my eye. Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. I really wanna finish this. I wanna finish a lot of these products in front of me today. I just wanna be more conscious of the environment because it means a lot to me, but I need to like walk the walk instead of like doing all the talk. Picking this up and kind of just using this to set my face again, add a little bit more coverage because this is a coverage kind of powder, but can you see? the difference between this side and this side after I do that. A forever favorite, honestly. There is nothing new to see here. Not my favorite mascara. I love the packaging. It matches me. It's like, I love it. The aesthetic, it's everything. I just really love my Lancome Lashy Doll and I have yet to find a mascara that is better than that. And I feel like I had favorites that I've been revisiting and they're just nothing compares to my Lancome Lashy Doll. I'm gonna use this. This is a Gucci mascara. I need to use this because it is expensive and I did buy it a couple months ago at this point. So I need to use it up. This is not a bad mascara. It's nice. And I find that the more I use it, I don't like how mascara gets better with time. It's like a fine wine, in my opinion. The more that I use it, the better that it gets. This is probably like my second favorite mascara at the moment of all the mascaras that I've tried. Lancome Lashy Doll is expensive, but I think that Gucci is more expensive. So I would save the little bit of coin, but this is the difference. I like a wispy lash. I don't like chunky volume. I don't like when I need to like go in with a spoolie and like separate things. I like an easy mascara that basically does what I want the rest of my makeup routine to do. Take what I have and just enhance it and make it better. Favorite lip liner at the moment. This is Island Spice. I really wanna buy more lip liners from Honeybee Gardens, but the colors, they're just not really like well displayed online in my opinion. I feel like they could be a little bit more descriptive, but this is my favorite color that I've tried so far. I love these. Everyone that will listen to me, I say, buy this damn lipstick, but this is Elf O Face Satin Lipstick in Dirty Talk. And I mean like everything about it is good. The color is good. The point on the lipstick is good. You can just like really like get in there and hug the lip. And then I did want to give a shout out to this. I bought this in January. I could not get enough of this this month. This is, I love the NYX Fat lip oils. This is not news to anyone, but the shade Scrollin', it's just, I say it every time and I can't think of a better word, but it is just absolutely delicious. It's delicious. It's like a nudie, beigey brown. So pretty. Should we put some in the center of the lips? I guess. I've honestly never paired these two together. 
love a big chunky statement earring and I love these Bottega dupes. I got these on Amazon. I also got another pair. They have like three, it's like three hoops in one. They're super cute. I will link them down below as well. But I just like, I love a fun costume jewelry earring. And if you're someone that doesn't get irritated by fun earrings like this that are not real, why not? Save your money. Bottega, I think they're like seven, $800. It's literally the same thing. And I think these were like 30 bucks on Amazon so I will link all the things down below. Hair products. I've been slicking my hair back more often recently. You know, I wash my hair twice a week. So when we get to the almost washing day, when we, well, usually I do this on the day that I wash my hair. This hair stick, ho my God. This is like a deodorant stick for your hair. You literally, sorry, there's like hair in it. That's disgusting. But you like pop it up on the bottom and then you take this and you just brush the hair down. You just like slick the hair down with this deodorant stick. If you are someone that wants to do a slick back pony or you wanna wear your hair like this, but you like to wear it like behind your ears and you wanna slick it so that it's like really slick here. I can't say enough good things about this product. I'm gonna buy one for my mom because the other day we went to my grandma's and my mom was like, how is your hair slicked back like that? Literally this. When I use this stick, I use this brush. This came in a set on Amazon too. It has like bristly, a bristly brush on this side. And then it has a little comb. I go in like this. And then I go in like this, like this, to just kind of like maneuver perfect and kind of just get my hairs where I want them to sit when I slick them back. So, so good. And this comes in a set. It comes with a tweezing brush as well, which I don't tweeze my hair. I don't know, maybe I should, could be a vibe. I just don't, but I use the tweezer brush to clean my hair brush out. It just like, it cleans the, the hairs out of any brush out so good, unlike anything else. Again, I will link my hair video here if I've already uploaded it. Skincare. I have been heavily into the castor oil. This one I got on Amazon. I would not recommend this because I bought this, I've been using it for a really long time and then I did like legit research, which I should have done. And you should really do research on anything before you do anything. So I've learned. But I bought this and then I realized that really you should buy castor oil in a glass, in a dark glass, and this is plastic. So I would not recommend this exact one. I have noticed such a difference with castor oil, my skincare routine, my hair care routine. I literally use this for everything and anything. It is sticky, it gets everywhere, you've been forewarned. What started out as a putting it in my lashes and putting it in my brows has now transitioned to twice a week, I will do my skincare routine, my serums, my moisturizers, my eye creams, and then I will take about, I'd say like a dime size of this, rub it between my fingers and just press the castor oil into my face. And apparently what that does is it helps to just penetrate all the things that you put on your face because castor oil likes to be absorbed into the skin. So anything underneath it, it kind of just helps your actives in your skincare routine become more active and who doesn't love that? And also if you're just someone that's dry, I have noticed such a big difference in the plumpness of my skin, in the texture of my skin. I have very dry skin. I'm 32 years old. I will be 33 in April. Where has the time gone? I will take what's ever left over in my hands and my palms and run it through my scalp because just like for your lashes and your brows, which is what I originally used this in, I still do, but that was the original use of this, thought process of this. It helps to promote hair growth. Such a good product, it is dirt cheap. I've been really enjoying it. But with that being said, I have also had to incorporate an exfoliating toner and I've been using this twice a day. I feel like it might be overkill, but this is the Youth to the People 11% AHA exfoliation toner. I put this on a little Q-tip and I put it around my eyes and on my nose because I've noticed that since using the castor oil a lot more on my face than I've ever used it. I'm getting milia. I think it's like dirt trapped on your skin that then migrates under the skin and it creates those little white balls, which I have one here. I have another one here. They're forming. And I really do think it's because of the use of castor oil, but I'm loving the castor oil results so much that I'm just trying to combat the milia with an exfoliation 
exfoliating toner. What this does is it helps to prevent milia because it strips the skin of the dead skin cells, which gets stuck in the skin and then create the milia, all that kind of fun stuff. And it also helps to get rid of milia that you already have over time. It is not a quick fix. It takes a hot minute, but it basically removes the layer of skin over the milia until the milia is finally exposed and then it comes out of your skin. And it is literally a white hard ball. It's disgusting. I bought this at Whole Foods. EO essential oil body lotion. This is in the calming fresh lavender. I keep this on my nightstand and every night before I go to bed, I just put this on my hands. It is a very thick, delicious, hydrating moisturizer. It smells beautiful. Lavender is really good for like stress and calming and helping you fall asleep. Mike was having issues sleeping for a bit there and I had lavender essential oil and I would take it and put it on his temples, a little dab. I would rub it between my hands. You would like sniff it in. It's just lavender is known to help promote relaxation. And so this is a nice little relaxing moment and I find that it does a beautiful job hydrating my hands, especially in in the colder months. I've been using this for quite a few months now. This is not just an exclusive February favorites, but it's something that I haven't mentioned here on my channel. And so I wanted you guys to know that this is something that I use literally every single day and I am absolutely loving it. And the second that I run out of this, I cannot think of a reason why I would stray away from this. It's just so, so good. I am no scent connoisseur. I bought this for myself a few months ago and I have been reaching for it more often. This is like my date night kind of scent. My husband always tells me that I smell really nice and I feel like it is a very me scent. Casablanca Lily, Tahitian Vanilla, Sandalwood, Grey Amber, Balanced Femininity with a Woody Contrast. I need like a Woody kind of contrast. I just feel like that works best with my body chemistry. I really want to be like a floral, clean scented lady. It just, it doesn't vibe with me. So I need something that's a little bit musky. And so this works really well with me and I have been really enjoying it. So I wanted to mention it. Sunglasses. I bought these and I automatically regretted them, but let me tell you something. I absolutely love them. I don't know what it is. I've been loving blue. Blue is just been my color lately. And I bought these Dolce & Gabbana glasses at Sunglass Hut towards the end of the summer, last summer. And they're just really cool. They're kind of like biker rock and roll, very chic. They cover my face. They're large, but they're not like too big for my face, even though I have a very small face. Let me turn this light off. But they're just like vibey. And every single time that I wear them, I get so so many compliments. I love these aloe tops. I bought them when they were on sale. I would not spend the money on them otherwise. I own three different colors. This kind of like wine red burgundy shade, which I like. I have a lilac -y lavender shade. And then I also have a cream shade. I really like these. I have been going to yoga class with my sister-in-law and I've just been like doing more yoga at home. And I've also been going to physical therapy. And so you guys know when I'm home, I work out and in like spandex workout pants and like a sports bra. And I just wanna be more covered when I'm out about in the world. So those tops are great. I find that they are concealing of the body, but they don't make me too hot. I can do a lot of movements in them. I can do yoga in them. They don't, they don't catch on anything because they are, they're thin and they're form fitting. They're a little cropped, but I do wear high-waisted workout pants when I wear them. But so I really like these. I wanted to mention them. I also wanted to mention that, you know, if you follow along here, you know, I have a hip issue. I've been going to physical therapy. My hip has been bothering me. I am subjected to yoga and physical therapy exercises and walking on a flat surface. And that is about the extent to which I can do my workouts. So I have been doing a lot of yoga. I've been doing a lot of walking and I wanted to mention the channel Boho Beautiful. She's very inspiring. I like her yoga. It's like challenging enough. I've been enjoying that channel and it has been helping me get through this very tough time in my life. I just, I know there are way worse things in life. I have gone through way tougher things in life, like losing my dad. But since losing my dad, you guys know, I have been heavily reliant on being active. It has really helped in my mental health, my anxiety. So the fact that I really can't do the weightlifting and the workouts that I wanna do has been kind of tough for me, but Boho Beautiful, I've been doing a lot of her 20 minute yoga workouts and it has been just enough, just enough. I could go more, definitely. 
but it's been really good and it's been helping me to relax a bit. I love these boots. They are by Bruno Magli, made in Italy. Also with the hip issue, guys, I really can't wear heels. This is about the extent of a heel that I can wear because my hip just bothers me. Not that I even wear super big heels, but like two, three inches. I would say three inches is my sweet spot. This is probably like an inch. Yeah, this is like an inch. These have been really cute, elevating my looks just enough. Good winter boot really soft. I love a soft, supple leather. I like that these are pointed, but also squared. They're not too pointed, so they're not too uncomfortable. I highly recommend these. I will try to find them, link them down below, but I got them on super sale from Saks, and I'm just really loving them, and they're just doing a lot for me in this time where I feel like I can't really do as much as I normally do. In terms of handbags, you guys saw this when I bought this. I bought it in the summer. I bought it secondhand. This has just like been my winter bag, and so I wanted to give a big shout out to my Fendi, Fendi Graffy, Fendi Graffy. I never know how you say that, but I love her. She says Fendi on the bottom, not quiet luxury at all, but she's a very soft leather. I love the color, a gray-ish, brown-ish, taupey, perfect kind of shoulder bag. I am a shoulder bag kind of gal. And this was definitely the bag of February. Guys, Britney Spears, this book, The Woman in Me. I've always been a Britney fan, Britney Spears. It was the first CD I ever owned. I love her and I just feel like this book was really touching. I find that my taste in books has really changed. Right now I'm reading Hollywood Wives by, is it Lily? No, it's not Lily Collins. Tracy Collins, something Collins. She's like a very famous author. Very much reminds me of like Candace Bushnell, which I think Candace Bushnell came after Collins. I don't know. I just read. I'm not, I don't know all the ins and outs of the said reading. I'm not really loving that book, Hollywood Wives. It's more of like a sexier book. I've read all of the Candace Bushnell books multiple times. I've read all of the Sex in the City series and I loved them. But I find that like in this part of my life, this is more of a book that speaks to me, like something about persevering through hard times. Not like self-help books because I used to read a lot of self-help books until I realized that self-help books were giving me anxiety because I just felt like the self-help books were telling me that I could always be doing more. So that was a vibe for a minute. We did Candace Bushnell, then we did self-help books. Then we went back to Candace and like that kind of like sexy kind of like reading about women and pushing through their careers and becoming like badass bitches. I read One Fifth Avenue by Candace Bushnell last year and I loved it. But just right now, I like this, like something that's more wholesome, kind of like perseverance, hardships, because I feel like that's kind of like where I'm at with my life, you know, losing my dad bad who keeps calling? Anyway, I just wanna say this book was amazing. I really loved it. It spoke to me, it was very touching and I'm enjoying books that I can relate to a little bit more. Not that I went through anything like Britney Spears went through. I have no idea what it's like to have a family like that, but I really enjoyed this. I loved it and highly recommend. And I think that you should check it out. Last but not least, I just wanted to mention that I've really been loving silver jewelry lately. Now I'm not one to stress Mixing metals does not bother me, but I will say if you know me, you know I always wear a bunch of bracelets, which I took a second took a minute because I got three tattoos on my wrist So, you know, I can't really wear like jewelry over the tattoos while they're healing I went to the store I was shopping and I saw this super cute like very rock and roll chick and she had like an arm stack of all Silver bracelets and I'm not gonna lie to you I felt a little twinge of jealousy because if anyone is known for an arm stack arm candy party it is moi. And I was shopping with not a single bracelet, except for my love bracelet, because I never take this off. I felt a little like, oh, how dare she? This is like my thing, even though it's not my thing, okay? We all know that. You know, I just, I had a moment. But she inspired me to whip out my silver jewelry, and I've been rocking the silver bracelets. This was my grandma's bracelet that she gave me, and I love it. I had it resized to fit me. This is a bracelet that Mike used to use from David Urim, and I had it resized. This is my love bracelet, this is gold. But again, I don't mind mixing the metals. And then this is a Tiffany bracelet that has a little thing on it that says love that my mom and dad got me one year for Christmas. And I just, I'm mixing it up and I like it. I'm never really like a silver chick, but I feel like it is very rock and roll. We went from like a bougie gold stack to like a more chic laid back. We don't care as much and that's just been 
the vibe. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it wasn't too long. Please let me know down below in the comments, what are some things that you were loving this past month? What are you loving right now? I would love to hear it. What are you reading? Are you reading anything good? Let me know what you're disliking. What are you doing? What are you up to? How are your like new year's resolutions going? Mine were going pretty well. They're not going so well right now, but that's okay because I'm trying to get back on track. I love you guys so much. If you have not subscribed yet, consider it. Check out some more of my videos. And if you and I vibe, then subscribe. I would love to have you in my little minuscule corner of the internet. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I hope that March is a great month for us all. And I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.